Hi everyone, my name is Kathy. I'm the Digital Humanities Center Assistant and welcome to the Intro to Twine tutorial. Twine is an open source tool for telling interactive nonlinear stories. So think of it as a choose your own adventure. In this video, I'll be showing you how to get started with your first passage and branching passages, as well as showing you some of the macros that you can use, which are just simple code that you can use within your passages in Twine. In this video, I'll be doing a simple exercise of rewriting an existing story for Twine. One, because I'm not a writer, and two, because it's an easy way to get started into Twine and thinking about nonlinear stories. Also, hopefully my examples will be more clear with a well-known story like Romeo and Juliet. The first thing I did is I wrote down all of the established plot points in the story. Then, at each plot point, I thought about what another diverging path could be and what the consequences of that would be. It might also help you to make a drawing of how passages would connect to each other, especially if there are more diverging paths. Think about whether or not the choices will lead to a new ending right away. For example, if Romeo doesn't go to the ball, then maybe the story will end there. Or does choosing one path over another path lead to effects down the road? For example, if Prince Aeschylus doesn't declare that the next person to incite violence will be executed, how will that affect Romeo down the line when he kills Tybalt? After you're done with that, you'll want to go to the Twine website, twinery.org. You can either download it on your computer or use it online. In this tutorial, we'll be using version 2.3.9. When you start Twine, it'll look like this, with zero stories on the left-hand side and a toolbar on your right-hand side. The first thing you want to do is hit the green button with the Add Story and give it a name. You'll be brought into this page where you can edit the passages. The first passage is already there for you. This blue grid is where the passages live. When you click into a passage, you can edit the text there. There's also a toolbar on the bottom with options like edit JavaScript, edit the style sheet, or the story format. We'll be sticking with Harlow 3.1.0, which is the default format for Twine 2.3.9. As you get more advanced, you can see that the other story formats can have some advantages or disadvantages depending on your preferences. Here you can have an add passage button and you can play and test your story from here too. The first thing we're going to do is edit our first passage. You can see that this green rocket ship is the starting point of the story and you can change that after the fact if you want to. I'm going to click into it and give it a name. Based on Romeo and Juliet, I'm going to call this one prologue and copy and paste the prologue text from the original text. If I click play, I can see what it looks like. The next thing I want to do is create a passage that is connected to the first one. I click into the passage and now I'm going to create my first link. I'm going to start with double brackets and end with double brackets and any text in between there is going to be a link. I'm going to call this one the story begins with a street flight. Again, <laughs> I'm not a writer. When I click out of the passage, you can see that it created a passage for me called the story begins with a street flight that is empty. The next thing I want to do is create diverging paths for my first choose your own adventure choice. I'm going to write out the plot points from now on. My first choice I have written down in my outline here is that I can either have the prince bestow mercy on the servants and just give a warning, or declare that violence is punishable by death as it is in the original text. So now that I'm going to have more choices and passages, I don't want passages with names as long as this one. We can link passages with shorter names to any text we choose by using this syntax. We'll need the same double brackets on either side. I'm going to type the text I want to show first, then separate it with the line symbol and type the passage name on the other side of the line. I want to connect the prince's declaration to go on to the next point called Meanwhile. You can see if I click out, it created a passage called Meanwhile. The next one I'm going to create is just a warning. I'm separating the two passages with three decorative lines. You can just ignore those for now. You can see now that there's two passages coming out from the first one. This is what it looks like when you hit play. Again, the syntax is double brackets, the text you want to show, a line, the passage name you want, and then the end bracket. So now that I've diverged the paths, I might want to converge the paths. Here in my outline, I want the next big place for everyone to land is the meanwhile passage. I want the warning passage to go into the meanwhile passage. In this warning passage, I'll create a link to the meanwhile passage and use my plot point text to link to that. This is what that looks like. You can see I haven't written anything in meanwhile, so there's nothing in it. 
So that's the basics of it. You can create a whole story like that if you want, but I also want to show you how to make conditional statements in Twine. So I have created the warning passage so that the prince just gives a warning instead of declaring that the next person to incite violence will be punishable by death. Later in the story, if the reader chose the warning path, then Romeo won't be banished, otherwise the original story will go on. In order to do that, I want to make a conditional statement. So a conditional statement at its very core is an if-else-then statement. So if something is the way it is, then something happens, otherwise something else happens. So here in my warning passage, I want to start my conditional statement by making a variable, which is just a symbol that can hold information. I'm going to use the set macro to set my mercy variable to 1. So in Twine, all you have to do to set a variable is add a dollar sign followed by the, the variable name that you want to use. Make sure that it's meaningful so you know what you're talking about in the future. And then if they choose the meanwhile passage, I'm going to set my mercy variable to 0. And then when I go down to the dead tibble passage, I can check if mercy is greater or equal to 1, so whether or not the person chose the warning path. So if that happens, then anything in this bracket following the if macro will play. Otherwise, everything following this else macro in these brackets will show. I can test that by going to the Prince Aeschylus scene and then choosing warning. You can see that mercy has been set to 1. And then I go to the meanwhile passage and you see that the mercy is set back to 0. So the placement of the set macro is also very important because you can see that this path leads back to meanwhile anyways. So that's not a good place to put set. So instead, I'm going to move my set mercy to zero in the one directly above it. So that if they choose meanwhile, it's just going to stay zero. If it, it goes to warning, it's going to be changed to one. So now I can go back and play. You can see that mercy has set to zero. If I go to the original text, it's going to stay zero. And then I can keep going until I get to the dead table scene by following all of the original plot points. And then you can see here, this is my else variable. So Prince Aeschylus exiles Romeo, which you can see is my under else in my passage. If I go all the way back, and choose warning instead, you can see that mercy has been set to 1. And if I choose all of the original plot points, you can see that it shows my if statement. Here, Prince Aeschylus grieves over his kin kinsman. And this is just another way you can create different pathways in Twine. So after you've finished all of your passages, let's make it pretty. The original color scheme of the Harlow story format is this black background, white text, and blue links. You can change this with Cascading Style Sheet. Go to the story title and click on it, and then click Style Sheet. You can enter your CSS here. So CSS works by using selectors to affect certain parts of your web page. If you want to change what your whole story looks like, Put your code in the brackets of TW story. If you want to change just the passages, put it in TW passage. Change the color of your link with the TW link and the way the link looks when hovered over with the TW link colon hover. Note that these selectors are the ones that work with the Harlow story format and that you may have to use different selectors for different story formats. Luckily, Twine has a lot of resources in the forums and in the cookbook, which will be linked below. So background color here, I can use the hex code, which is just a set of six hexadecimal characters that define different colors for HTML. You can also use certain color names like I did in passages. Here color is talking about the text color. There's many more things that you can change with CSS, and you can dive into more resources like W3Schools. 
In CSS, you can also take advantage of the tags in the passages. I'm going to tag my happy endings, sad endings, and neutral endings and give them different looks so it's clear to the reader which ending they got. The syntax for that is brackets tags equals quotation marks, your tag name, quotation marks, and end brackets, and add your code within the curly brackets. So for my neutral endings, I'm making the background gray and the text white. And this is what that looks like now. You can also change font effects inside your passages by using built-in macros. Keep in mind that these changes will only be applied within the passage you use them. So if you want global changes, make sure you do it in the style sheet. You can change font by using parentheses, font, colon, single quotation marks, your font name, single quotation marks, and end parentheses. Use the brackets to indicate which pieces of text you want to apply that font to. You can see here that if you make a mistake, it'll let you know it in test mode. You can't just pop in any font, however. If the font is not supported by your browser, you'll have to import the font, and there's some really useful forum pages that show you how to do that. For font color, let's say I want to make the word print purple. I'll do parentheses text dash color colon purple and use brackets to surround the word I want in purple. You can also use the hex code like in CSS. Let's say you want every instance of the word prints within the passage to be purple. You can use the enchant macro on the top of your passage. This makes every instance of a target word follow the set of rules you give it, like text color purple or textile shadow. However, this only works within the passage that the macro is applied. If you go to another passage with the word prints, it won't be enchanted unless you copy and paste the enchant code over. You can also add some media within your passages. For images, I want to add a picture to the balcony scene. I found my picture on Wikipedia. I'm going to copy the image address and then use the HTML embed image format, image source. All of these macros and HTML embed formats will also be in the accompanying slideshow linked below. The other commands I put within the bracket can control the width as well as give it some alternative text for it to be more accessible. I just put exactly what it said on Wikipedia about the image in my alt text. Using width and height, I can resize the image. However, if I use both the width and the height command, it can stretch and distort the image if I'm not using the correct ratios. If I know how wide or how tall I want the image to be, then I can use either one or the other to maintain the image proportion. Videos are even easier. You can just use the embed code from a YouTube or Vimeo video. Sound can be a little tricky in the sense that it must be hosted somewhere online and it can be hard to find the host link for an audio file. I found mine on freesound.org by user Zaggy2. If you find one, you can use the audio source format with the sound address name and set the type to match the audio type. In my case, it's a .ogg file since it works the best with Twine. There's also a command at the end that is autoplay so that it automatically plays when you open the passage. If your sound is not working, it's probably an issue with Google Chrome. It should work when you switch to a different browser. Now that you're done with your story and your customizations, you can set a start point by clicking on a passage and the three dots after it, and then the button Start Story Here. You should test your story by using the test function so that you can see if your variables are being set or if there's any errors in your code. Once you're done with that, you can publish to an HTML file. You can either share the HTML file for people to view locally on their computers or find a place to host it online. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and we can't wait to see what you make.